Alright, Titans, we back. Another podcast. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. Today, I got a crazy question for y'all. I know we've been discussing Will Levis, Malik Willis, Ryan Tannehill. What decision are they going to make at QB1? What if Ryan Tannehill starts this season, which I expect him to be Levis and Malik Willis out in camp. What if he starts and has his best season as a pro? Now let's take a look at his numbers. Let's just go back to 2020. We're talking about 3,800 yards, 33 touchdowns, seven okay. picks, 21, 3,700 yards, 21 touchdowns, 14 picks. Then last year he missed five games with 2,500 yards, 13 touchdowns, six picks. What if he has a career year? I'm talking about 35 to 40 touchdowns, maybe 10 interceptions. You know, two years ago, he had seven rushing touchdowns. So let's say a handful of extra touchdowns. We're talking about counting for like 40 touchdowns with uh, limited turn- turnovers with his back against the wall. What if Ryan T- Tannehill does that and you can't trade him? You don't want to sign resign him with the new QB market because they probably get even more than what he's getting now. What do you do at quarterback if that's the situation that happens? I can't think of a scenario short of him winning the Super Bowl and like riding out on a white horse that Titan fans like, what would it take for you? What would be a successful season if you left Will Livers and Malik Willis on the bench that started Tannehill? Like, what would it take for him to do for you to say, you know what? This guy deserves the full season. You know, like, is it playoffs? Is it a playoff win? Is it an AFC championship run? Is it a Super Bowl? That's why it just like dawned on me that like, it's almost like he's in a damn if you do, damn if you don't situation because it's nothing he probably could do to keep his job as the Titan quarterback next season. So when you're in a situation like that, like with a new general manager, with a new offensive coordinator, with a new O-line coach and a lot of new moving parts, that's why I feel like they're going to move on from Tannehill before the season starts. And then you have to start thinking about what teams could potentially take him and then what veterans are out there that you could bring in because you want to keep at least three guys on the roster that way you're not in a, um, a saint situation with Taysom Hill playing quarterback, man, that would be, it would be like a good and bad thing all at once because you know, he's going to get the guaranteed money. You got the nine million, the dead cap. You really can't move him. So really, it seems like he's in a bad situation, but he's really not. I feel like this is his chance to go out. And if he balls, some other team would take a chance on him looking at the quarterback market of next year with the guys coming out in the draft and the guys that are going to be available for free agency because Justin Herbert is not leaving the Chargers. So in a way, Ryan Tannehill would probably be the highest paid free agent next upcoming offseason if he balls out and has a crazy year this year. And I don't even think that crazy. I mean, a year like he had in 2020 or 2021, probably gets Ryan Tannehill, I want to say between 30 and $40 million to play football next season. Y'all let me know down in the comments what y'all think about that. It's something that I was just thinking about when I was driving, but let me know down in the comments, hit that like, hit that subscribe, follow me on all social media platforms, live twice a day, shop by Buddha, we out.